Hey y'all, happy Thursday. I'm going to be painting live on this painting that you see behind me tonight, um, which is quite far from being finished at this point. <laughs> um, and if you're new here, my name is Paula Densall. I'm a fine artist and I specialize in creating large scale abstract art. And if you're interested in finding out more about my work, then you can uh, look in the link, look in the description of this video and there is a link uh, where you can find out more information. Uh, now, so um, let's see, here we go. I need to, before I get started, um, let me take out my phone. I want to make sure that this is indeed broadcasting live on my Facebook page. So give me just a second and let me check that. All right, let's see, um, looks like, Oh, okay. Looks like we are good. So, all right. So I am going to get rid of that. Um, all right. So um, while I'm waiting for people to start joining, I thought what I would do is um, I wrote down a couple of the my most frequently asked questions, um, and I thought I would go ahead and answer those for you now um, while and before I started painting. Um, sorry, I'm hearing like stomping. My son, I think, is walking up the stairs. My studio is um, in, in my home, so there's all kinds of noises. There was someone cutting grass outside a few minutes ago, and it's like getting dark, and I don't know. So anyways, you know, live, and that's how things go, right? <laughs> all right, so um, uh, first question, um, I get asked a lot what brand of paint I use. Um, my favorite brand of paint is Golden. Um, and uh, the reason why I like it so much, it, it has such a high uh, pigment load. It has lots of uh, color in it, and um, cheaper um, paints have uh, more binder, which is filler, and so you're not going to get as rich and vibrant of uh, color when you use the lesser quality paint. So um, Golden is one of the professional um, level quality paints that have a um, the high pigment load. Um, another one I like to use is M. Graham, and they actually are here locally in Portland, Oregon, where I'm located. Um, I love, love, love their uh, acrylic paint as well. And I, they do also, they make oils and watercolor too, if I remember right. Um, I occasionally use the Liquitex, um, the, um, the heavy body um, one, usually just the transparents. I don't, I tend not to use the opaques because I feel like they are, again, they're kind of rather flat for, for my use, for, um, for my work. And um, let me see, I'm trying to think of my other ones. Oh, I love Matisse. Um, they are out of Australia. That's one I discovered just a few years ago. Um, there's only like one U.S. supplier um, that uh, sells it, and uh, so it's not like just readily available. Um, so I, I, I love that brand as well. Um, and I have, a, you know, a couple few other things I've tried. Um, Sin, Sin, oh, I can't pronounce it. It's a French, French, what's that? Sin, Sinier. I can't pronounce it for some reason. I took French in high school, but that's gone. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've recently just in the last year discovered, um, their acrylics. Um, they make all different kinds of paint, but, um, I really like their acrylics too, but golden is my most favorite. Um, oh, looks like I actually do have some people on here and I cannot see everything. So hold on just a second. Um, Angela's here. Hi, Angela. Um, Anise. Laura. Hi, Laura. And I did answer the question. I said acrylic paint, Laura. So I answered your question already without even seeing it. Sweet. <laughs> um, and then we've got Celia. Hey, Celia. Okay, awesome. So we've got several people here already. Um, and before I get started back here, I was going to, oh, since there are already a few people, I'll answer one more question, one of my, my most frequently asked questions. <laughs> Um, I have a lot of artists that look to me for art business advice, and I'd say the number one art business question I get is um, about how to grow your following on social media. Um, so uh, 
That is a huge, huge question. Um, and there's so many working parts to that. Um, and it would take a really long time to do it justice. Not, I don't have time to go into it here, but, um, and I've written down some things, um, so just so I could keep my thoughts concise. Um, uh, first, you before you even think about uh, trying to grow your audience on social media, your following, you really have to first figure out um, who you are as an artist and how to present your work in a way that aligns um, with that before you can even start try to, trying to grow your following because um, you have to be clear on that um, so as to not you know, um, so that you can communicate that to your audience. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if you don't know those things yet, then you can try all the tricks that are out there that everybody shares, all the free information you can find on the internet about hashtags and themes and posting frequency, et cetera, and still not get any traction. Um, and this actually, um, what I was talking about, about who finding out who you are as an artist and how to present your work in a way that aligns with that is actually something that I'm going to be diving into um, in my art business coaching group that I'll be announcing next week. So be sure to watch out for that, um, all you artists out there. So, and on that note, since like I said, it looks like we've got quite a few people, um, I will go ahead and get uh, started on this piece behind me. I'm going to try and answer, you know, a couple few questions um, along the way, I see I already have a couple questions here and I'm going to go ahead and try to answer those. And like I said, I can't really see them from here. Maybe I should, uh, try to bring up my, um, my stream on my app. I've got my volume turned down. So now I can see, cause I cannot see on my, I've got my computer over here. That's what I'm broadcasting from. Um, so let me do that and see if I can see the questions. Um, Okay, Julie's asking if I also use pastels in my paintings. Um, I do uh, use wax, pa wax pastels in my paintings, um, and occasionally I do use chalk pastels, but those are a little trickier because I do work on canvas and acrylic. You know, it's it's um, really a slick kind of a slick surface. It doesn't really have um, it doesn't have as much tooth as um, paper would, obviously, and it doesn't really have anything to hold to. So when I do use the chalk pastels, I use a spray fixative over it and it kind of changes the quality of it. That's why I try to stick to the wax pastels instead, which I still spray um, a fixative over those because I um, use a water soluble wax pastel. Um, so I use a spray workable fixative over that um, before I um, move on to putting more layers on top of that. Um, hope that helps. Um, and Matt is asking if I give art instruction. Um, I used to teach um, uh, many years ago, um, and I was—I think I was probably one of the first um, painters out there doing online um, instruction. I started doing that. I think it was in 2008. I did that for several years, and then I stopped um, in order to uh, be able to focus more on my own work. Um, but I'm—I'm uh, I'm getting so many requests lately. Um, for, to, to teach again. And so I am considering doing that. I'm contemplating it. Um, but I have a lot of things in the works right now. Um, and, uh, so I'm, I'm having to set my priorities. Um, I think I will probably start that up again. Um, probably in a, like a, a group kind of a setting online, um, where it's like a, a paid membership group type thing. Um, and because I just think for, for me, I think that might work better rather than doing a set course. Um, so uh, just keep an eye out for that. But like I said, I don't know exactly when that'll be. I'm launching my coaching, uh, announcing my coaching group next week, which will be a paid membership group. Um, and once I get that going and get that um, moving and get all the working parts, you know, settled, <laughs> then I will um, look into um, doing art instruction as well. Um, so any, uh, I think that was everything, all the questions so far. Um, yeah, so far looks like that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, um, working on this piece behind me. Um, if, um, I'm probably going to work for about, you know, about 30, 40 minutes or so. 
um, on the piece behind me. And if you can't stay the whole time, that's totally fine. Um, I would suggest that you share um, this live video to your page so that you can come back to it later and watch it, um, watch it later. Um, and there should be like a share button somewhere on your screen <laughs> so that you can do that. So if you share it to your page, you'll be able to come back later. Um, and you won't forget about it because it'll be right there on your page. So I'm going to get started. <laughs> All right, and um, hopefully y'all can still hear me. Um, as I work, um, I'm just going to try, I'm going to focus on what I'm doing, and um, I will stop periodically to see if you guys have any questions, and I'll answer questions periodically throughout the time um, as I can. And uh, so... Otherwise, just sit back and enjoy. <laughs> um, and for those of you who are new to my work, um, I do work. I work intuitively, so I don't start out with a planned um, uh, painting in my mind. I just start by laying uh, marks on the surface of the canvas, um, either with pastels or paints, and I just build up the layers. Um, and each layer subsequently, you know, help, you know, helps with the creation of the next layers because I'm just responding to what's there and I just keep building um, until it's finished, basically. And it takes uh, many, many layers, many, many hours. Um, so. And I am going to try my best to not be like in the way, but of the camera. But we'll see how this works. Like I said, um, another thing I, I do is um, I do step back away from the piece periodically to look at it because when you get really close up to an abstract work, you're just kind of too close to it to see it as a whole, especially with these bigger pieces because this piece is a. Uh, um, 36 by 48. Just adding some um, smaller little marks just to kind of get myself back into the work. And I typically, well, pretty much always listen to music while I work, but since I'm broadcasting live on Facebook, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't want to get... Um, Deemed for that and get shut down, so I cannot do that, unfortunately. And my my dog, I have an Irish setter. She's hanging out with me in the studio. That she's pretty much always here. It's kind of funny when I come upstairs. She always thinks I'm going to my studio, so she'll just sit. She'll run up in front of me and then sit outside my studio. And even if I'm not coming in here. She's kind of funny. If you've been following me for a while, you've probably seen pictures of her on my Facebook page. I'm guessing.
Um, Celia, you're asking what I'm calling this piece. Um, I don't have a name for this piece yet. Um, typically, the names don't come to me um, during the, pr the process of creating the piece. Um, usually that happens after the piece is finished. Occasionally something will come to me during the process of creating it, but normally it's after it's finished. Um, probably because um, whatever it's supposed to be speaking and saying just doesn't come through clearly enough until after the piece is finished. Oh, Celia, yeah, actually, I, I do remember seeing um, the boards you did on your Facebook page, and I meant to comment on those, and I was going to come back to it, and I didn't. I love what you did, especially that first one you did with the brighter abstract um, piece. I, I love, you have such an, such an eye, a good eye. I just, I love your style, and I was actually going to um, see if you wanted to collaborate on something. <laughs> And um, Laura, you were asking um, how many hours I spend on a piece this big. Um, honestly, it's hard to say because uh, I work on um, multiple pieces at once um, and I rotate them in and out. And like the really large piece that I've been posting, I started that piece back in, I think, the summer of last year. So um, it's been a really long time. And as far as how many hours, I just I don't keep track. Um, it's, so it's, it's hard for me to really say, <laughs> um, and it, and it varies so much. Some pieces come together faster than others. And I don't do the, the girls, the portraits anymore. I remember seeing that you asked that, um, I haven't done those in, Probably over four years now. I'm specific, uh, completely focused on the abstracts now. So for those of you who are new to my work, I, I used to do um, uh, figurative work, um, very whimsical um, portrait, um, intuitive portraits. It wasn't, they weren't something that's not like based on any person. Um, I did those for a lot of years. And uh, so I have a background in, um, in, in that. And, um, and I actually am able to draw realistically um, um, people and different things. But um, I actually find abstraction more challenging than that. And I think that might be part of why I love it so much. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to squeeze this on here. Straight on here. This is that brand I was talking about. And I'm going to put this up to the camera. See if you can see that. That's the French brand that I could not pronounce. I don't know why I can't, but I couldn't. <laughs> um, I don't know if y'all saw the um, the flowers I posted on my my page yesterday, but. Uh, I had some flowers that were this bright pink in it, I think. Did I? Yeah, I think it is. And then like purples and I have a, I'm kind of gravitating towards these, these like Valentine colors right now. We'll see if it actually stays in the piece or if I end up covering it up. It's like I said, there's lots of layers, so... to step back from it for a minute.
have brushes like all over the place right now. So having to uh, walk back on the other side, I had brought some up that I had cleaned from my last painting session and they were on the back side of the table where my computer was. Purple is my favorite color, in case y'all didn't know that, with teal probably being a close second. Laura was asking if I'm using brushes. I'm using palette knives, brushes, scraper tools, um, even a piece of foam like from construction <laughs> stuff. Uh, so all kinds of various different things to make different kinds of marks. And at this point, I'm not making decisions on composition. I'm just trying to get more um, layers in to respond to. Um, and at some point, I'll start to see a composition emerge, and then I'll start editing it down and refining it. y'all do me a favor and let me know um, if you feel like the uh, it's broadcasting um, clear or not because from my side it looks like it's fine but um, I, I do have it set to broadcast at the, the highest quality at least I thought I did. <laughs> let me make sure that of that yeah I have it set to that sweet okay so hopefully you guys will be get you're getting the highest quality stream as possible. 
Let me see. Okay, Angela, it looks like I'm assuming that you're um, saying that it's coming through beautifully. Wonderful. Oh, thank you, Celia. Oh, I like the sound of that. This piece in the room with the blue velvet Chesterfield sofa and some pops of gold. Oh, I like that a lot. Oh, yay, August. Sweet. I know you kept catching me like right after I would like sign off. <laughs> like every single time. It was like, oh, there's August. <laughs> so funny. So how many of you are artists, by the way? Okay, sweet. Laura, it's clear for you too. Oh, Celia, it's going in and out for you. Okay, so we've got a couple people says that it's looking great and Celia's coming in and out for you. I'm going to make an assumption, Celia, that maybe since um, a couple other people it's working fine, that maybe it's your internet connection possibly. Oh, thank you. And I cannot pronounce your name. N-E-K-E. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Angela, I know you're an artist, sweetie. <laughs> like, I don't know who else is on here because I can only see the people that are commenting. So um, if you're here and you're just lurking and watching, um, then I can't see that you're here. I just, yeah, I can see, like some numbers and stuff like maybe who, how many are watching, but that's about it. <laughs> okay. Um. <sighs> hmm. Like I said at the beginning, for those that are like joining, this piece is far from being finished. I don't know how much of this will actually still show in the piece when it's done. Um, I've been working on this off and on for, um, I'd say probably a couple weeks. But um, I haven't worked on it probably in the last, at least the last week, I think. My weeks are starting to run together, sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you, Laura. Only on, only on computer. I'm trying to read what you're saying there. Oh, August, you're saying sin, sin, e, 
Lie. Okay. Very close to the actual French pronunciation. Like I said, I took French in high school for two years, but I, I only remember a little tiny bit of it. And of course, that's not a word that I learned because I wasn't a painter. I wasn't a, I didn't know that I was supposed to be an artist back in high school. So, um, I grew up in a little town in Alabama. There wasn't really a whole lot of art exposure. <laughs> We didn't even get art in our high school as a class until I think it was my senior year in high school. And I was too busy with advanced placement college courses. And they were at the same time as the art class. So I did not take art in high school. I did not take art in college. I did not take, I don't have a, have a formal training like background um, college degree in art. Um, I've taken a few workshops, but for the most part, I'm self-taught just by studying the masters, um, you know, like Monet and that's like Joan Mitchell. Those are my two favorites, um, and various other ones that like Frankenthaler and I'm blanking on names right now, but um, I learned a lot just by doing that and just trial and error, just doing the work, seeing what worked and what didn't and what I liked and what I didn't. The hardest part when you've never painted before is just starting to paint. I have, I know there's one person that has contacted me several times that, and this is a, this happens to everybody. I used to have the same problem. Um, just starting because, you know, it can be scary, something you've never done before. And I think it's human nature just want to be good at something right away. It's not the way it works. <laughs> you got to put in the time. And for some people, it comes to them quicker, and for others, it takes longer. Angela <laughs> means you don't have t teachers voices in your head experience is the best teacher like yeah I only have my own voice in my head which I'm pretty sure that for the most part correct me if I'm wrong we're our own worst critic right I know I was <laughs> um, I've gotten um, easier on myself over the years but I just realized I still have my phone in my back pocket. I was like, what is that? <laughs> okay, I'm going to step on the other side of the room so that I can look at this better. Because like I said, looking at it close up, it's hard um, for me to really evaluate or respond when I'm too close to it. Hmm. Okay. I feel like I want to turn it. Let's see what happens when I do that. Something I do quite often. Okay. Make sure it's still good on the screen. Okay, we're still good. All right, good. All right, I'm going to go walk on the other side and look at it again. Okay, I think I'll prefer it that way now. Not that it'll stay that way, but I think I prefer it this way now. So I'm going to continue working on it in this orientation and see where it goes.
Oh, August, you're self taught also. Awesome. All right. Let's see. I don't know if people are coming in and out or I keep hearing like a clicking noise. I don't know if that's from comments or what, but. Oh, that's from comments. Okay, that's what that is. Oh, there's Joan. Hi, Joan. Put my face on the screen. Hi, Joan. <laughs> um, we have a concept before I go to the canvas um, or an idea of colors. Um, I actually answered this earlier, but I will answer it again because I'm obviously you weren't here when I answered it. So um, I do not have, um, I normally don't have a concept um, of what I'm going to do before I start a new canvas. Um, occasionally I'll have a few colors in mind. Um, something I've started doing recently um, um, since I guess about summer of last year, um, I started, um, I took up floral um, design, floral arranging as a hobby. Um, and um, cause this is, art is what I do as a business. This is how I make my living. Um, so this is, this is work. <laughs> so um, floral design, I started doing that as a hobby and um, I started realizing how much in common it had with my artistic process as far as the way I went about it. And as I was learning about floral design, um, how um, when people go to learn about how to do it, um, that's really the way that they usually approach it. Um, so uh, fell in love with it right away. And of course, um, nature is that's a you know one of the sources of my inspiration um especially flowers because the vibrant colors um but um so what i going back to what i was getting at um i have done a couple of paintings where um i created a um floral arrangement and then um created a painting inspired by the colors in that arrangement um, I have people when I post pictures of my floral arrangements, they tell me that looks like one of your paintings. Um, so I decided, you know, to kind of reverse the process instead of um, uh, just letting it come naturally because it's just it's a subconscious thing. Um, it, I, colors that are in my surroundings, surroundings tend to come out in my work, um, whether that be in nature or um, like different um I've even like been wearing something um, and ended up painting in the same colors with not even with not without even realizing I was doing it. So it's just it's a subconscious thing. Um, but I decided to try and you know go about it that way um, with um, I know with one piece in particular I did that. Um, and then actually there's two. There's one that I actually posted that yesterday. Um, it was um, the in all time and space. Um, I started that piece when uh, I had been out in my backyard um, looking at the hydrangeas blooming and um, was working on a piece and then I was like oh it looks you know this is coming through in the work and so I went out there and I was taking pictures and then I brought it back in and then I just kind of used that as a way you know continuation um, and it was loosely based on the colors um, but the piece that uh, just recently sold um, a closer walk that actually was a um, arrangement, a floral arrangement I did in the fall of last year. And um, that's when I started that, that painting and um, finished it uh, towards the end of the year um, last year, 2017. Um, and I was thinking, I have posted that floral arrangement with the painting before, but it's been a while. So I'll have to remember to do that so you guys can see. Um, um, the correlation between the two, but I normally don't do that. Um, my, my process is completely um, intuitive and organic. And um, I do occasionally start with a, you know, a, a color palette, like a, just a, a hand, like a handful of colors, but it doesn't always stay that way. I, I usually end up adding more colors in and sometimes covering up other colors. It just, I, even if I start out with a color palette in mind, it could change at any point during the process. So I have to stay open to um, what's happening on the canvas and what I'm seeing. So 
I hope that was understandable. I felt like I was kind of rambling, so. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Um, how long have I been on here? Oh, it's like 42 minutes. All right, I don't want to. I know my son's probably going to start getting hungry soon. He is a growing teenage boy. Um, I will continue for a little bit longer. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. I don't know how many of you are still here. But like I said, um, if you're not able to stay on or you want to go back and watch this later where you can like fast forward and, you know, and rewind and whatnot, um, be sure to share it to your page. Um, there should be a share button somewhere on the video here. Um, so if you share it to your page, then you'll be able to come back and watch it later and watch it over and over again. And that way you don't have to come find it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Just trying to, to decide what um, color I want to go with next. That's the hard part for me about abstracts, trying to talk about what I'm doing <laughs> as I'm doing it. Um, and I had in, not intended on talking while I was working, but um, that's just how it ended up working out. <laughs> um, so I'm going to need to take a minute and step back away from the piece again to kind of reorient myself so I can um, feel like feel what needs to be done next. I know I've dropped a couple of things with paint on them. Thankfully, I have a, an industrial style rug down here to protect my carpet. <laughs>
as you can see, this is a very slow <laughs> process. Um, adding layers, stepping back away from it. These pieces don't, um, and, and the contemplation part of it is, is all part of the process. So um, these are not quick. <laughs> these take a lot of time to create. And I love it. <laughs> And sometimes I do, I mean, sometimes um, I can get, sometimes I get frustrated with a piece if, if I've been working on it a while and it stops, it starts to just kind of get away from me. And those are the days where I have to just at some point stop and go do something else or switch to another painting if it's a day that's just like things just aren't working no matter what then I have to step away and do something else and then come back to it later. Um, I have, I've had people tell me I make it look like it's easy. It's not easy. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> it was easy. <laughs> I probably wouldn't love it. Um, like I do. <laughs> it's all, but it's all part of it. Definitely challenges me. Oh, I see. I've got a few more questions. Oh, and Celia looks like she left. I don't know when you left, but good night, Celia. <laughs> looks like Angel um, August might have signed off too. Sometimes <laughs> Angel. Sometimes paintings need a timeout. Yes, I agree with that statement. That's a good way to put it. Um, Laura, are the white portions? the canvas that you have not painted. Um, actually, I have painted some on these portions here. Um, through here, there might be a few areas that don't have any paint on them yet, but they will end up covered up. Um, I actually have gone in and put some white in some areas already. Um, it's part of my process where I edit things out with white. Um, I also edit things out with other colors too, um, but um, at this early of a stage, a lot of times I end up putting white uh, back in um, to edit it, edit parts out and simplify it, um, and that helps me. Some and, and sometimes I have I I do that in my process because it helps me move forward with the piece. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. Speaking of white, <laughs> let's go back in and put a little. Here and there, I've got some over here on my palette. So 
some of this that's in here, like this area right here, is more of a cream color. Um, sometimes I'll use um, like an ivory color, and other times I'll use actually pure white. Erin, how do I choose where the colors go? Um, it's, it's not a conscious decision, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, it's very um, much a, like a gut thing, subconscious, intuitive thing. Um, I'm just responding to the layers that are there um, and just trusting um, that inside of me, is going to know where to put what. That's, that's really the only way that I can explain it. Um, I don't, I don't think about it, especially at this stage. I, I don't want to think about it too much um, because then I might end up into overthinking, which causes me to stall out and then I stop completely and can't move forward. So at this point, I want to stay in that flow state. Um, in that subconscious state where I'm just trusting that um, each move that I make on the canvas um, is going to move it forward and towards the completion of it. Um, and later on, um, usually, well, what always happens is at some point when I'm stepping back away from the piece, um, I'll see a composition um, emerging. And when that, when I see that happening, then I start thinking about it a little more. And um, because I'm um, starting to respond um, more to the overall um, big picture <laughs> uh, and, um, and refining that composition to the point where um, I can take it to um, being a finished piece. Um, yeah. I hope that uh, hope that helps to for you to understand it because I know you you are you do um, very realistic work and I used to do very realistic work that's where I started um, and this is quite a different process <laughs> so love and love your work by the way there's several of you on here that I follow you and love your work so. Um, just wanted to say that. <laughs> okay, and I was about to use some of this. Um, I love these. I've gotten just a few of these. These high flow. This is again by Golden. This one. I keep turning it backwards. Permanent violet dark. Oh no, my dog decides she wants to go out. I don't know if she wants just out of the room or what. But let me just go open the door so she can. Go, she might want water, so hold up. Facebook Live, that's what happens. Life. There you go, bud. Up. Go, go downstairs. Go. Go downstairs. Alright, sorry about that, y'all. Alright. So I think I'm going to add a little of this purple and see what happens with that. And then we will just see where it goes. 
So I'm going to use this shaper tool. This is one of my favorite things to use. I get asked about that a lot anytime I do any video. I get asked about that probably. That's the most often asked about tool <laughs> is my little shaper tool. You can use it to, to add like big areas of color. You can use it for lines. You can like for spots or you can just take a whole lot of paint and just spread it all over the canvas. Sometimes I use it that way too. And if I were going to do it that way, I'd get like a, some kind of like plate or I, I got a new, um, I don't even know where it is now. Um, it's like a butcher palette. I don't even, I've misplaced it. I don't know where it is. Um, got to clean up in here. Uh, but I would put some of that in, um, in one of those and then add some water to it, to, um, just a little bit of it, of water. Cause with, um, the acrylics, you don't want to have too high of a ratio of water to the paint. Otherwise it will break down the adhesion and it won't stick to the canvas. It gets, I can't remember the percentage now. It's just kind of a ingrained in me, I just do it automatically. And now my son is calling me. <laughs> this is what happens when you try to work when your family's home. Okay, she's fine. All right. That's why I was, I've been, I've been wanting to try and do this during the daytime when my son's at school. Um, but a lot this week, my husband's been working from home, which makes it hard to do this um, because he's on conference calls and in and out of his and his office is two rooms over. But he is kind of a loud talker. <laughs> so um, I, I always have to have my music on for sure um, when he's home because I'm trying to work um, without it and it, it's distracting. So um I think my son's taking care of our dog, our Irish setter girl. Yeah, like this piece, for instance, and several of you have asked about colors. Um, when I started this piece, um, it, I started it with the <laughs> the intention of using the same colors as my Now and Forever piece. And apparently this piece did not want to be those colors <laughs> because that is not the direction it went. Um, I still am not 100% sure um, what the color scheme will be. Um, when it's done because it's got it's got different shades of blue purple pink it's got some crimson in it some like um, bright greens a um, little bit of yellow um, even some teal like the turquoise teal and then some some more some subtle teals and then of course white and cream um, and then even some like coral in the wax pastel here um, so, like I said, it hasn't been edited down very much yet, um, and it's still got a long way to go. Oh, so even, I wish, I don't even know if y'all can see that, but this bit that I put over here with this purple, um, it's it, sometimes little happy accidents happen, like Bob Ross used to say. Um, 
at least I think that's used to say that, um, but there's a drip that started happening right there um, because I had quite a bit of this fluid, um, you know, flow paint, this uh, golden stuff here. Um, and I like that, so I'm going to leave it. Um, and I, I, obviously with the acrylics, I can always cover it up later if I decide it's um, too distracting at some point later on. But I'm kind of thinking, I'm going to step back away from this piece again. Um, I'm kind of starting to feel like I want, I'm feeling like I want to start really putting more of the purples and the pinks and the reds in here. Um, I, maybe the influence of that floral arrangement that I made yesterday, <laughs> um, causing a shift in this piece, but we'll see. Um, I've been on here just over an hour, an hour and three minutes now. So, um, I think I will, um, go ahead and sign off for now. Um, starting to get a little hungry. It's, uh, about that time for supper here. I'm in Portland, Oregon. So, um, it is about 6:20 something here. Um, I don't know where all of you are. I know you're probably all over, um, the country and maybe even some of you, uh, not even in the U S but anyways, um, I, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now and I will do another one of these. Um, I'm going to say, I hope that I can do one tomorrow, but I, I'm not for sure. Um, we'll see, uh, how the day goes. And, um, if not tomorrow, I will definitely do another one next week. So be on the lookout for that and uh, be on the lookout for um, the announcement for my new coaching group next week as well. And um, like I said before, if you want to come back and watch this again, uh, be sure to share it to your page so you can come back and watch it again later. And I will see y'all next time. Have a good night.